Hey, good morning. Chuck here with Apple Drains. Today we are going to uh, start and begin to design um, a water project, a water feature, a waterfall, a wall of water. Uh, somebody wants to do something with this trellis, uh, pergo, whatever this is behind me, and they've done quite a bit of work here, but it, it needs some more features. They ask, what can we do? Let's take a look and give you some ideas of what we're going to try to create and actually we're going to use a French drain. It's going to be the ultimate French drain um, as well as many other aspects of drainage as well. Let's take a look. So it's springtime here in Florida. You'll have spring very soon if you're up north and you can see they've created some really cool stuff here. They've got the walkway coming up um, over top. This is a septic mound so they were trying to do something with it and you can see they've built the trellis um, going over and they actually have a really cool wall um, trying to fill it in with ivy and plants but let's see if we can't create a water feature right here i i believe we can really do a whole bunch for this um, again ultimate french drain there's nothing like this one so even before we take down any of these um, trellises they've got going on there what we need to do is create the trough that's going to accept and catch all the water that comes from the waterfall so there's some special needs here. We are on top of a septic mound. We don't want to lose any water. That's why I say this is the ultimate French drain. It's going to collect every drop of water <laughs> and it's going to discharge down something, whether it be stone or maybe even some old uh, concrete blocks or concrete patio, but whatever it is, it's going to discharge back down to the sump basin which is going to, we're going to remove that post and that's where the well will be okay so that's the all the water that's getting pumped up comes up through our trench and then it's going to actually get lifted up and we'll have the waterfall tucked underneath of the um, joist that they've got going on there and it'll just drop all down should be beautiful but we have to create the ultimate French drain so Normally a French drain can actually run level, but um, try to give it some fall. In this instance, we want this water to really flow out of here. Let's look at that bubble. You can see this is actually level. So we need to create a full bubble. That means it's really got to go downhill. We've got lots of fall, but <clears throat> the system's going to work exactly the same. So the French drain is still the same. We've got perforated pipe. Holes are going to point down. There'll be a small base of gravel underneath, and there's actually going to be a lining. You know how you use those pool liners to make a pond or whatever? There'll be that down under there as well. But there's still going to be a base of gravel. We need that water to flood through the gravel, and then it goes into those holes, remember? And it's going to get carried away. And over here, where it really drops down on the stairs, will create a waterfall as well. But the system works exactly the same. So <clears throat> the other thing that we need is we need, we definitely need to wrap this in fabric. Why? Because number one, we are in a sandy soil. So we always wrap this in fabric in a sandy soil. If you have a clay soil and you're doing a French drain, fabric, you know, that's... A so you know all that hype about fabric and gravel wrapping this and that. Remember, we're on a septic tank. Uh, excuse me, a, a drain field, a septic drain field, leach bed. You see this gravel? This has been here over 40 plus years. There is no fabric here and it works great. Used to be years ago that they would take old newspapers and wrap the top of the drain field just to kind of keep debris from you know going down with gravity. They, they eventually tried to wrap the entire field with fabric and of course those fields were dug up and replaced because water could not escape um, and it just packed it tight. Uh, there was tar paper used which is still used in some fields today uh, and it's laid over top of the drain field but again fabric and gravel a lot of hype. Okay so we've got this down to the good level um, you can see I think you can see it See that bubble? This is called a full bubble. And the bubble's pointing all the way to the back. 
So we've got about two inches of fall every 10 feet, and that's more than enough. Remember that we need to make sure that all this water that drops down from the waterfall above, which is gonna be up here, we need to make sure all that water is collected, not lose a drop. And then we'll send it on around down the hill to the well, which is where the pump is, and that's going to be the heart circulating okay, all so this water. Okay, so once you have you know a good depth and a good fall of your system, remember this is actually collecting water from the wall of water. So we've got real good fall coming down through here. We went ahead and got some. This is actually 40 mil plastic. It's kind of like vinyl, kind of like what you get uh, at Lowe's or Home Depot for your pond if you do a you know a pond whatever retaining pond um, and then you go ahead and pin it out of the way and then we're going to put some of the super fabric down inside of here put some gravel in there then our pipe and lots of gravel all the way back to grade and then it's going to discharge so we've got this portion of the excavation done next i just stopped my vinyl over here but we've also got to put the vinyl down the hill down to our well, which is down there. Remember there was a post there. I went ahead and pulled that. We'll put our sump basin down there. I might put two of them, but I do believe one's holding enough water to make this system work. Um, vinyl has to be under here, and then we'll lay our stone that for the dry riverbed so that when they do kick it on, now we've got a waterfall coming down to the sump basin, which sends it back up to the top. So once you have your um, your vinyl laid out. I started to throw some gravel in there, but I wanted to show you. Go ahead and run some water. Make sure you got good fall. You can see it going all the way down. All the water's running down to that end. And then I've got it stopped, but it'll go down over the hill, down to your well. Okay, before we go any further, we need to go ahead and get our sump basin, um, the hole dug for that. You can see I dug the hole. Here's the basin. Let's drop it down in there. And push on a little bit whatever but I want to get this nipple lined up with where the waterfall is going to end it's going to come down right through there and there'll be a catch basin right there underneath the rock that lets the water you know disappear and come into the basin and then of course we're going to have our our, our outlet line which is going to be inch and a half before it starts I'm going to try to use a Zola M53. That's a third of a horsepower. Uh, I think that's probably more than enough. Um, but anyways, go from inch and a half or reduce it to one inch so that it goes up the hill. And there at the first post, we'll bring that water up and it'll come across and of course be a wall of water dropping into the system, back down the waterfall and into the well, which is our sump basin. And it just recycles until you want to turn it off. So always take the time to backfill your pit properly because it can float up if it's not perforated. Remember, we are containing this water and recycling it. So we've got to make sure that that pit doesn't float up. And I've just got a piece of plastic over the lid so that no debris gets down in there. But, and I don't always show this on the videos when we install the outdoor sump basin because we're doing other things <laughs> but you got to pack it in there so turn your shovel upside down and really pack it and it'll sink way down and just keep adding more so once your basins really packed in you can start to do a few other things take the lid off you can see I already added the inlet line. It's coming over to a 90, and I just stuck a piece of pipe on here um, just so no dirt would get in it. But we'll talk about that in a second. So we brought it in. Remember the inlet, the nipple? You've seen me do this many times. You see right here is the nipple. And I went, and went ahead and cut that off before I put the pit in. So we have a place to bring our, our four inch pipe in. And <clears throat> we're gonna put plastic or the vinyl all around here. It, it may look like a pond, but really it's just a collection area and we'll put gravel and rock over top of it. You won't even see anything, but where the 90 is, there I might put a riser up, but there'll be a grate there. So it's just like a floor drain or a catch basin. And again, remember what this system's doing. This is recycling water. So it's coming from 
up top that's going to be the wall of water we will run that pipe across there i'll show you how we make that it's going to drop down into the gravel perforated pipe the french drain and it's going to come through a system of rock like a waterfall and it's going to get collected right there by that 90 and a, and a grate so it all comes back into the basin what we're getting ready to do now is go ahead and plumb the the pipe that comes from the pipe or excuse me from the pump out it'll go up the hill and again we'll send it through the actual waterfall the wall of water and it'll all drop down it comes back down and just recycles over and over but right now what we got to do is go ahead and drill a two inch hole You've seen me do this many times, just like the discharge of any regular sump basin. I'm going to put my Zoller M53. We'll start with that. I think that's more than powerful enough to do this. Um, bring it up, inch and a half, put a check valve on it, and we'll drill through. And out here, we'll switch over to one inch pipe, which is going to create some pressure. So I'm curious how powerful that waterfall will really be. But we'll switch over to one inch. And then we'll go up that first post. It'll make a 90 and turn and go across. That's where the water is. Well, I want to review that one more time because this is something that's really important. You need a two inch hole saw and your handy dandy black and decker or whatever you got. And what you're doing is you're drilling down in, you know, through the pit, but you're below grade. So it makes the perfect inch and a half. This is the exact outer diameter. It makes the perfect hole every time. And remember, we're going to hook the pump up down here. You'll have a 90 to go out. And then we're going to change this from inch and a half down, uh, reduce it down to one inch so we can go up the hill. Okay, and so up the post. here's where we are. I went ahead and set um, a used Zoller M53. Um, person upgraded that and put in the M98. But I want to try it first. So we put in a used one. Remember that we're lifting water, it's called a head. And we're lifting water nearly 20 25 feet so we want to make sure we have a pump that's powerful enough to lift the water that high but we don't want want one that's too powerful because we're going to reduce this as it comes out you can see where i've stopped where i butted it out we're going to reduce that and when you reduce that to a smaller diameter pipe it creates more pressure so we want to check this one out first and hopefully i can get enough uh done here today to show you this thing kick on and we'll see how much pressure it really has but right now you can see it all sets up the same way starts off with a male threaded inch and a half adapter small piece of pvc as the riser check valves arrows pointing upwards and then we have a 90 remember how we drilled through the side of the basin to bring that out so now i'm going to go ahead and reduce this um, to one inch pipe and send it on up the hill you know on up to the top where it will have a 90 up there at the bottom of that first step and it'll go right up that post uh, to where we'll have actually the waterfall uh, pipe okay itself. i just wanted to show you real quick um, before i put the liner over it because all this is actually under the liner but um, remember we've got the pump lifting up the water showed you that we've got the inlet that's collecting that water as it comes back down the hill there'll be a, a catch basin we'll call it a grate here where water will come down in and go back into the pit. But what I did to help go up this hill, if you look, this is an inch and a half to inch and a quarter no hub. These things are great. I use them all the time. And what that's allowing me to do is to give it a little bit of bend. Um, you can see it's got some flex in it. And then there's an inch and a half, excuse me, inch and a quarter to one inch bushing that I put the other end of the no hub on and glued that to the inch and a half pipe. So I'm getting ready to lay the rest of the liner, but I wanted you to see that. And of course, then I plumbed it, you know, all the way up to just above the top of um, where we're going to turn and let our waterfall come down. So let me put this together, get it covered, and then I'm actually going to fill up this sump basin and we'll see how much pressure we have. We're lifting that water a good distance, like I said, 20, 25 feet. Um, which I, I believe the Zoller M53 will easily do that. But what I'm curious about is how much of how much pressure is going to come out right there. I mean, is it going to you know be a fountain or is it just going to bubble out? We need to see. Okay, so once I filled the system up, you can see it. It kind of disappears um, you know, through some of the 
stone, but if you look carefully, see if we can zoom it in, you see the river of water running down, all the way down. And it goes, fills up the little pool, dumps into the sump basin, and just sends it back up the hill. You know, a simple fountain, but remember, we're gonna add the wall of water up here where I'm standing, and we gotta finish that off, and we're gonna drill the holes in the pipe today. We'll have all that set and ready to go. Should look pretty cool. Okay, so once you've marked out your line, you lay out a straight line, every half inch we need to drill a hole. And this is gonna match up with the little insert that we put inside there. This is tedious work. <laughs> It takes quite a bit of time and you know you might have a drill press that would be a lot easier than trying to do this by hand but regardless it does take time to do and but once you get this all done we're gonna put the inserts in here and I um, stuck one in. so we've got this is a 10 foot piece of pipe every half inch you know you figure that out what's 180 uh, 220 <laughs> 240 I believe holes in this 10 foot section of pipe so you know I stuck one in here so you could see it you can see the insert see if we can get it out of there pretty hard to get out once you pound them in but anyways that is a get it where you can see it that is a coupler for quarter inch irrigation and what you do is you buy a big pack of those and you have to cut off the tip of it so that you can match up this hole. Let me get the drill size for you real quick. If you can see it there, it's 11 64th. And I just, you know, I measured that, you know, matched them up, made a couple holes on a piece of pipe just to get the right size. Then you just use a rubber mallet to pound those. And that's the insert. As you can see, it's a really small piece, but I cut this. This is designed to puncture into the uh, quarter inch irrigation drip line, but I cut that piece off and then I just pound this whole piece straight down into the pipe on that 11 inch hole. Hey, this is Chuck with Apple Drains reminding you that if you believe you can do something, you guarantee you can do it. Have a great day.